How's it going, everybody? Rybrand right here today. We are back with our Minnesota Wild Draft to Glory, guys. We are here in season number three, about to get it underway. And I was messing around with the lines, messing around with the coaching staff. Haven't made any changes yet. Uh, but Christy here, uh, Matthew Christy, I don't know if, I, if I'm down for him or not. I mean, he's behind the net, carry, shoot, efficient, balanced. I don't like the fact that he doesn't fit Kaprizov. Uh, at all. I mean, we still get, still get a plus three on the top line, right? But Johansson fits him really well. Kaprizov prefers overload. That's why he would be such a great fit on the second line. I'd rather not play him on the second line. Like, honestly, the plus five I don't think is worth it. Although there'd be 91, 90, and 81. And then Kaprizov would be a 91 on the second line with Benino's 86 and Zuccarello's 89. So maybe it's something I look to do, but I'd love to keep playing Kaprizov on the first line. He, he's too good. We might actually give it a go, right? Kevin Fiala is signed for one more year. We can see what we got here with the plus fives. It actually might be worth it for chemistry-wise, but I don't think there's a coach out there that would fit as well um, uh, right now. Nobody out there is carry cycle. That is the hang-up with Kirill Kaprizov. Um, it, it, it's a lot of these coaches are carry shoot. So if we take a look at Coop, uh, he's behind the net. He's carry shoot. He's overload balance shoot. That's not going to help very much. He's overload balance shoot. Uh, he's behind the net carry shoot. I mean, you're not really finding lots of guys with overload and cycle, um, that would fit, fit Kaprizov. We just might've gotten unlucky there with him being, uh, uh the, 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 the superstar of the team and his chemistry. I mean, yes, I, Orlando Ward here would fit, uh, actually does not fit Kaprizov. Was it, was it Orlando Ward? Yeah, it's balanced si or overload with balanced cycle, but you know we're not finding carry cycle pretty much anywhere. But this guy doesn't have overload either, so you can see Bradley Drury fits Kaprizov pretty well, but for the most part, he'd be a fine fit. But he's not a good coach, right? None of these guys are NHL head coach quality. There's only four head coach quality guys out there. Joseph Byron's the worst one, and I don't think he fits either. Yeah, he's behind that, but has cycle. So I think for now, Matthew Christie is our guy. I do need to find a goalie coach and assistant coach. Uh, I think I will do that right now. Uh, AHL assistant is, I believe, what we need. So we'll just get somebody who's who's good at teaching. Uh, a minus here for this goalie coach. He wants to be an assistant coach. I'll let him be an assistant coach. Uh, we'll, oh, we don't have any budget remaining. Interesting. Okay, so I guess I don't have enough budget in the coaching budget, so I might have to go pull some of that from the scouting budget because uh, you can clearly see we don't need that 800000 over there. So I wonder if I can... Make that budget adjustment, but you guys can see where I'm at um, mentally with the with the with the team and uh, scout salaries. Can't make those any lower. Uh, I can. There we go. We can make these th uh, this a bit higher. Uh, let's put um, arena operations up a bit because I got to spend some to make the arena better. Uh, I'll keep my uh, and then I think scout. Uh, actually, no. We'll put it into advertising so we can sell more. Some more tickets. So there we go. Um, we're going to save the budget there. Go sign ourselves a, some some assistant coaches. Uh, but I think I might try the plus five and then Kaprizov on the second line there because he's going to get... Uh, Kaprizov's getting first line power play time. I'm not going to put him on the penalty kill, I don't think, over a guy like Marcus Foligno. Actually, I kind of want Hartman in there instead. We're going to do that. Hartman doesn't fit, but he's been a good penalty killer for us ever since he's been here. I am going to keep Marco Rossi up for like nine games. We're going to see because he fits this coach really well. Like if he, if I put him there for Benino, that's a bad idea because he's a 78. I kind of want to try it. You know what? I'm not too worried about this season, guys, uh, from a winningness perspective. Uh, I think I'm going to give it a go, though. I think I'm going to give it a try uh, with Marco Rossi as second line center. He's a 75, but you know what? We'll see how he does in the first few games. He's getting a plus three playing between Zuccarello and Kaprizov, so it really can't get much better as far as line mates there. But our defensive core is not good. Guys, this might be a season where we end up selling off at the deadline uh, and just trying to rebuild, get some more picks, get some people coming up. Uh, Marco Rossi is trying to make his debut this season. Dmitry Skalov is, is medium top nine. He's 24. He could come up. Uh, Connor Duar, maybe. Damien Giroux, sure. Gabriel Dumont's a little old. Uh, some of these guys probably aren't going to make it up. They, they aren't going to get up here. Ludina is a guy probably I would rather see right there. Uh, the defenseman, maybe O'Rourke. Ryan O'Rourke is looking very nice getting the plus three. Uh, Addison there and Gordiev. I don't know what they are. Medium seventh. Medi okay, so Kalen Addison at least has some potential to be something for us. And then in goal, 
Faribo and Tucker Tynan. He's going to play. He's going to get his chance now. Uh, our goaltender is also not looking great with Cam Talbot and Hunter Jones. We'll see what happens here. Hunter Jones is signed for one more year. But, guys, not being able to sign or trade for players makes it almost impossible, especially when we didn't sell off in the first year. We'll see what we can do. But um, let me go. I'll hire some coaches, guys, for the coaching staff, and then we will jump into the season simulation. Guys, we do have a trade here that I'm thinking about. Marcus Foligno, if Marco Rossi does end up being the guy uh, and he can stick in the NHL for the whole season, you know, the first nine games, actually, I don't think it really matters. If I, I'm going to try him out for probably the first month. Nine games doesn't really matter. He's not a CHL player anymore. He's playing the AHL. Um, so I might trade away Marcus Foligno. His salary is pretty high. I could probably get a fourth for him looking at this deal. Uh, and that, that'd be another pick. A guy like Foligno is fine, but he's bottom... Nine, and I'd rather have a, have a guy, bottom nine, bottom line uh, player. So we'll see here. We do win 6-3 in preseason there. Uh, okay, uh, of course. Um, auto assign promotional nights. I tried to sign an AHL associate coach to be an NHL goalie coach. She didn't want to, She didn't want that. It's, it's not apparently good for her skills. Uh, so I guess I'll just find some NHL assistant coach that specializes in goalies. Uh, so I can give them a deal, whoever they might be, maybe under the budget, I hope. Uh, maybe I'll have to be, give a generalist a contract. Uh, there's one goalie coach, and I think he's too expensive. Yeah. So we don't have enough money in the budget there. 400 and uh, it's a little bit, yeah, it's not enough. Uh, NH AHL assistant coach that specializes in goalies. Uh, a teaching. I think this is who I, no, this is not who I was going after. Uh, we are, we're going to give Marku Letton in. Uh, NHL goalie coach, give him a little bit more money than what he wants, right? 200000 that's the max I can give him. He should probably accept that. He's a good teacher, uh, specializes in goalies. So um, actually, I could always promote one of our... Uh, I, I'm noticing I have two goalie coaches down here. Uh, the assistant coach, Young, is a goalie coach with good teaching. And then Tara Tukin, um Sergei Teratukin is another goalie coach there that I could promote to be the NHL goalie coach. Uh, goalie coaches don't have to be great, but uh, I'd like them to have good teaching just for guys like Hunter Jones and Tucker Tynan and those guys. A uh, shootout win there. Kaprizov has got five points on that second line. He's actually probably feasting. Uh, okay, Marku Lettinen is there, guys, so we don't have to worry about our goalie coach. Let's go ahead and get this to the start of the season here uh, and see how we do with Kaprizov playing on the second line. You know what, Marco Rossi. Actually, you know what I want to do? I do want to see how he does in the preseason. I would love to see... Preseason stats for Marco Rossi. He could earn himself a spot. At Stop it. Oh, come on. If only I could accept this trade. Adam Fox for a sixth in Felino. How does that? Oh, it's got to be the morale. It's got to be morale. Yes, it's morale. He's furious. Oh, this would be such a slam dunk deal if it wasn't a draft to glory. Why must you torture me like this? Uh, EA, why? I mean, I, I did it to myself, right? But we went 4-2 and two in the preseason. Kaprizov had six goals, eight points. I'm sure that means Marco Rossi had a good start. Uh, or Marco Rossi did Jack... Yeah, he did absolutely nothing. He had two points. Uh, okay, maybe maybe not going to be the season for Marco Rossi. But you know what? We'll give it a few games to start the season. I think I'm going to give him a nine-game trial. I know it doesn't matter, but... Um, this is five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so the St. Louis game is where we would make a decision... Uh, oh, I've got to assign the scouts, guys. Give me another minute. All right, guys, I have finished setting up the scouts, and I don't know what the heck is glitching out, but it jumped me, I guess, to a different month. Was it January 1st? No? What What month did it take me to? I have no clue where it just took me, guys. Uh, but we are 3-2-1 and one to start the season. Okay, we got to get up to the St. Louis Blues game uh, before we make a decision on Marco Rossi in that second line, but... It's looking not terrible. We're top of the division right now, guys. Kaprizov has 15 points on that second line. Ooh, this could be interesting. Takashi's got seven. Uh, Rossi's got seven points in 10 games and is even. That's great news. But the Fiala, uh, Johansson, uh, Greenway line is not good even with the plus five. Joel Erickson Eck has got a plus five. Ooh, this is looking not too shabby. Not too shabby. Nick Bonino's eight points and even. So it's interesting to see here what's going on. Zach Parise is having a very bad season. Bro Dean is the best player. Belpedio, Zamanov, Spurgeon, McCosh, and Sutter. Ryan Sutter is starting to drop off. I don't know. And we don't have anybody to replace him, of course. 
Talbot's having a good season. Hunter Jones is not. Very few games played, though, so can't really judge it by that. But I think I'm going to keep Rossi in the lineup. I think I'm going to keep Rossi in the lineup. He's doing fine. He's got seven points. A lot of assists on Kaprizov, and he's helping Kaprizov be a really freaking good player. The top line is dropped a point each, so it's it's now 90, 90, 89, which is still not terrible. I'm sure the defense is not helping them out too drastically. But Ruslan Zamanov, another, okay, he's doing fine in the medium top four. Louis Belpedio, eh, could be better. Scratched is Susie. I mean, we could play Susie over Louis Belpedio. Uh, I could definitely do that. I actually should do that now that I'm looking at it. Uh, Susie, let's go. Oh, he's a defensive defenseman. That's the problem. I would get a minus one in playing him. Playing him over McCaution's a good idea, but, like, I don't know, guys. I don't know if I want the minus one. Ian McCaution is minus two. I'm going to give Susie the ice time. I don't know why I didn't do this sooner. Because he's a better player, and then he gets the plus three. So Susie is better than McCaution. So, yeah, I'm going to do that. That's the one change I'm going to make right now, and I think we're going to go ahead and get another month into the future, seeing how we do get up to this Montreal game. Uh, things could come crashing back down to earth at any moment. Uh, there's two losses and a win. Okay, there's points. Okay, there's some wins. Three straight wins. I'll take that. We're not going to be a, a world beater, but we're not going to be a bottom feeder, it seems. Uh, and it looks like two straight wins there. Okay, a point. There we go. Okay, so some wins. We're still in second place in the division. Uh, the Blackhawks are right behind us. We're only four points behind the Blues. Um, that's that's all fine with me. Kaprizov slowing down his pace a bit. Just about a point per game now. Marcus Johansson is just about there. Fiala, Greenway, Zuccarello, Craig Takashi is doing fine. Um, where did Marco, Marco Rossi has gotten what? The point? Has he gotten a point in the last 15 games? Okay, maybe it's not his time to be playing second line minutes. Maybe he should be playing on the third line. Maybe that would help. Uh, and moving a Nick Bonino up, getting the plus three? Yeah, that'd be an 86. That's better. I, th I think I still play him there. Marco Rossi's a great fit with this coach, though. So his carry cycle, balanced, balanced, could, I mean, work just about anywhere, right? Uh, moving him. Yeah, no, he's not going to be good there. I'll put him, move him down to the third line. He's fine. I'm going to try not to get him any more ice time, although I could put him on the second power play, right? If you get him on the second power play, I just really want Marco Rossi to grow, guys. I really need these guys to grow. Uh, like a lot. Uh, Victor Rask fits. Benino doesn't fit. So does Marco Rossi fit? He is a playmaker. He does fit. I'm not going to put him on the first line power play. Actually, over Parise? Why, why the heck not? Why the heck not? Give Marco Rossi all the ice time. See if, if he can just put up points and grow, right? Because if we get Marco Rossi to grow, that'll be peak. This season, I don't see us winning the cup this season. I see us putting pieces in place to be a, a cup contender. But we will get up to January 1st here at the end of this episode. Um, so we don't have to worry about anybody there that RFAs. Oh, look at that. Three straight wins. Oh, look at four straight wins. Five? Wow. Oh, my goodness, boys. Look at all these wins. Look at all these points. I still want Adam Fox so badly, but no, I can't have him. Look at all the wins. Uh, except for the last two. Ignore the last two games where we gave up six goals apiece. How is this team 25, 11, and 4? Kaprizov with four point per game on the second line. Best team in the uh, Central Division. Second to the Sharks in the West. And third in the league. So whatever I'm doing, I'm doing it right. Uh, don't ask me what I'm doing. Because uh, I don't know what's clicking right now. I'll have to check. But Kaprizov is doing fantastically on the second line. He's getting, what, 17 minutes? Yeah, he should be getting more ice time than that. But, like, he's still a point per game. Marcus Johansson is looking good for us. Fiala's got a lot of points. Zuccarello, Greenway. Like, those are the guys we need. Benino now with 29 points. Uh, let's stick to forwards. Victor Rask on the fourth line, I think it is. Yeah, he's playing on the fourth line, I'm pretty sure. Doing very, very well. Um, Craig Takashi's got 17 points. Marco Rossi's got 16. That's beautiful. He's yet to get a power play point, so that's a bit of a bummer. But he's now got 16, so he's on pace for what? About... 32, 35, somewhere in that range. Points. Hartman's doing great. Joel Erickson Eck is a plus 15 on the third line. Defenseman Suter's great. Suter and Spurgeon is a great pairing. Brodeen uh, and Susie is not a great pairing. And Zamanov and Belpedio is fine. 
Zamanov and Velpedio is, 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 you know what? I didn't expect it to be any better. Uh, Zamanov, I would love to see him grow a bit. And then goalies? Who needs good overall goalies? You're 79. You just, you're fine. 913 save percentage. That's fantastic. What is working right now? I'm trying to figure it out. It's the goals for, isn't it? It's goals for and defense. What the frick, St. Louis? 2.27 against? That's insane. That is just not right. Power play could be better if I stacked it, but we're fine with that. Penalty kill, very, very good. So we're fine there. So yeah, interesting to see. Kaprizov on the second line seems to be paying off. And one of the things I noticed is that Victor Rask on the fourth line would still be better than Marcus Johansson uh, if we did something like, uh, nah, see, that's not going to work. Uh, but Victor Rask would still get us a plus five <coughs> if we wanted to use Rask instead. He signed for one year, right? Marcus Johansson, I mean, that would spread out the talent a bit. Marco Rossi's up a point. Love to see that. Yeah, absolutely love to see it. Uh, but we're going to leave Victor Rask where he is because he's uh, he's thriving down there on the fourth line. But Marco Rossi, look at him. Plus, plus one overall so far this season. Uh, in the AHL, is anybody, I don't see anybody jumping out to me as O'Rourke, I think, grew a point. Maybe. I'm not entirely sure. He's minus 11. It, how is... Oh, I was going to say they're both minus 11. It's just, I, th I looked at penalty minutes. The top line's not uh, not exactly what I'd call fantastic. The AHL's not what I'd call fantastic. Goaltenders, Tucker Tynan. Really, really good for Tucker Tynan. It's not the goaltending that's the issue. Interesting. Okay, I guess we're just not scoring down here. We just don't have a fourth line. That's really what we don't have. Uh, Daniel DeSalvatore. Yeah, these guys, whatever. They're fine. Uh, but the NHL is working fine. Parise, uh, Parise is starting to hit that wall, guys. If he retires, I mean, I don't have an NHLer there either. That's the thing. We don't have guys coming up. I don't have a, a ridiculously deep pipeline of talent to be um, ha have coming up. I also want to make sure owner goals, um, concessions need an upgrade. Am I upgrading the concessions? I think I might do that right now, uh, just so I don't forget. Uh, owner goal requirement. Upgrade, upgrade. There we go. Completes an owner goal. So we'll get some money from the owner, make him happy. I don't know how we're doing what we're doing here, guys, but uh, we're doing it. That's that's what matters. Uh, but we are here. Going to stop here at January 1st. We'll get the trade deadline and end of the season in the next one. Guys, I think I should, I can't be a buyer really, but uh, do we, so here's the, here's the question I have for you guys. I'm going to leave this for you. Do we try and bring back Kevin Fiala? He's an 85. He fits the scheme. Um, he wants $9 million, but who are we signing? Who is that money going to go to, right? I mean, Cam Talbot, we should probably bring back. Hunter Jones, I want to give him a contract to bring him back. I'll give him a three-year, two-way deal. Yeah, what the heck, why not? He'll be our starter probably next season, which is very scary. Um, but I don't see a reason not to pay Fiala. Nobody's going to really ask for money. Maybe Takashi in the future, right? Like, Where's, yeah, there's Craig Takashi. He signed for another year on his ELC. He's fine. He's an 84. Still listed as a third-line scorer. He's doing all right. Maybe I should give him more ice time. You know, maybe... Uh, but see, the thing is, the team is clicking. The plus three is there. I don't want to miss out on, like, a... So, yeah, there's no... He doesn't fit the uh, scheme well enough, considering he's a two-way forward, and he's balanced cycle energy block. Oh, that's so gross. That's horrible, but also this team, I don't know how we're doing it, but we are doing it. But you guys let me know. Should I keep trying to go for the cup? This I mean, I know, okay, listen, we are five points atop the division. I get that. But would it be better to sell off some of our aging pieces or things like that? The problem is I can't get players on the team. So when I sell off a player, I can't bring one in. You know, I, I can't bring in somebody. It'd have to be an AHLer to come up. And well, there's not exactly a ton of... Young guys. Oh, thank God that Zuccarello's, I mean, he's still hanging on too. Guys, we're going to, it's going to be a hard wake up here in a minute. But uh, as far as guys potentially, potentially being something for us, Maxime Nykulin is the guy. He is growing. That is beautiful. Where is he playing right now? He's playing in Russia. He's got 30 games played, seven points. He's doing fine there. He's the guy that we want to look for. There's also Cody Matthews. Uh, Kalen Addison's a guy that, you know, we got to look out for coming up. Tarasov, O'Rourke. I mean, Tarasov maybe down the road. Wallstead is fine. He's growing more than Tynan is anyway. Um, but here's the problem, guys. We don't have 
a glut of elite talent or guys that we know are going to grow and become something, those uh, those guys aren't on the horizon. Like, it's Nyquilin and a couple defensemen. The forward core, I think I have to bring back Kevin Fiala because I can't get anybody else. Like, if I could transition this series from a draft to glory, I would probably take it in a different direction and sign some really good players because we probably could have won a cup by now, if I'm being 100% honest, by bolstering maybe a goaltender, maybe getting Adam Fox, you know, it'd be sick, right, for Felino, who I think is expendable. Felino's another guy I think could be expendable. Uh, I'd give the $9 million for, actually, Joe Hansen. Marcus Johansson, three years left at five and a half. Kevin Fiala's got a lot of trade value. Greenway's got a lot of, like, Johansson's 32. Nobody wants Johnson? Johansson, excuse me? See, the problem is I'm getting all, all players here. I can't take players back. The best I could hope for is a first from another team. And I don't know what I have to give up and if it would be worth it, right? So, like, let's take a look at, like, Montreal, for example. They, they Okay, let's find a team that wants to give up, that has their first they want to give up. Anybody want to give up their first? Nobody's, nobody's a buyer? The New York Rangers, it's cheap, right? It would cost me... Nick Benino, a third and a fifth to get another, a third next year and a fifth next year and Nick Benino. Benino's having a good year, right? So this is the kind of trade I could make getting rid of Benino. You know, here you go. We got us two seconds in Wallstep, not Matthews. Tarasov, maybe, is a guy. Like, I have to give up my second to get Ottawa's first. Philly doesn't want to give it up. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh's is cheap, right? So Hunter Jones and my first, I'm not giving up my first. Sorry about that. Uh, you know, San Jose doesn't... So the, the Rangers trade is one that I might consider. The St. Louis Blues. Joel Erickson a third and a fourth. Victor Rask. Like, Victor Rask a third and a fourth for a first? Yes, Victor Rask is doing very, very well this season on the fourth line. On the fourth line. I get a fourth liner who's expiring. And next year's third, next year's fourth for a first this year? Guys, I think I'm just going to pull the trigger now. I'm not even going to wait for it. I'm going to do this, but these are the kind of deals that I'm looking that I might be able to do. I've already got Marcus Foligno in here, right? Marcus Foligno is a guy that I could I could flip maybe for a... Nah, probably not for a first. I know he, uh, that uh, Adam Fox has the same value, but uh, let's go with left wingers, right? So yeah, Marcus Foligno is a guy that teams seem to want. Uh, so maybe I could get some mid middle round picks out of him, but he could play instead of Victor Rask, right? And if I use Victor Rask to get the Blues first, like, I don't think the Blues are missing the playoffs. Don't get me wrong. I don't think we're missing the playoffs either. But the more chances we have to get top six potential forwards and guys that have higher overalls to start, like, I'm probably not going to call it the Blackhawks and, or the Predators. The Predators don't even have their first, right? Like, maybe a team like the Oilers, maybe the team or, or the Coyotes might want to give up their first, right? They're a buyer. They're a team that I could look to say, hey, it could be a top 15 pick. Um, draft picks, Arizona. It would cost me Zamanov. I don't want to give up Zamanov. Okay, let's let's call Edmonton and see what they want. Uh, theirs is even more highly valued. It would cost me Greenway, which I don't want to do. Uh, Florida, I don't know where they are in the standings, but like it's teams like that. The LA Kings, it would be way too much value. It would cost me Tucker Tynan, my first next year, and a second. Guys... I don't know what to say, but this could be a good deal. This could be a bad deal, right? The LA Kings are a very bad team. I'm not giving them anything to improve them this season. The Kings have 33 points. They're right down there with the Canadians and Islanders and some of the worst teams in the league. They could definitely be a team that I look to target, right? Or even the Toronto Maple Leafs. The Toronto Maple Leafs could be a team ready to give up their first willingly, but don't, but don't end up making the playoffs, right? Toronto, it's still a stack roster, but I don't know. I take their first, and they, I mean, they still have the Predators, right? But yeah, they don't want to give it up. Okay, we looked at Florida. What about Ottawa? Ottawa's a team. Yeah, they're first. They didn't, they didn't want, yeah, two seconds in Wallstead. I mean, maybe I could throw in uh, Tucker Tynan instead of Wallstead because Wallstead's growing and, you know, maybe finagle some of the trade. But I think this is kind of what I got to do. I got to look at those fringe teams, those teams in third, and maybe go get one of their firsts, right? Like the Blackhawks look like a dangerous team. The Jets might be a team willing to get rid of their first right now because they're, they're, they're in our divisional spot, but not by much. You know, so if we, if we go ahead and find a trade with the Winnipeg Jets for their first, take a quick uh, look. I'm, I'm talking about all these firsts, right? Because I could get a second first round pick 
and it w might not cost me somebody too tremendously valuable, but obviously you can see they are, they don't want to give up theirs. The Chicago Blackhawks probably don't want to give up theirs either. No, um, Colorado's a team that uh, I guess is not good. Columbus, I mean, we saw other teams towards the bottom. Obviously, I don't want to give up Nyquilin. He's literally the only elite player besides Kaprizov. The Red Wings are bad. Uh, it would take a ton of trade value to get theirs. Edmonton didn't want to give like so. These are the teams like those are the teams I'm targeting, right? Like I like that Victor Rask deal though. Like to get another second, we've got picks, right? A first, a second, three thirds, a fourth, a fifth, two sixths, three sixths, and two sevenths. Like we have picks galore. Getting another first, we could seriously just say, you know what? This season we'll give up Rask and maybe a few picks. And then see what happens, right? Maybe it wins the lottery. Maybe it doesn't. But maybe we can snag an elite player or even move up with all that trade value we've got. You guys let me know what you want to see, what you think I should be doing. Like the devil's trade here. I, I don't want to give up Matthews because he's an elite goalie that we could look to, for the future. The Islanders are in the bottom of the league, so they're probably not going to want to give it up. I didn't think so. The Rangers are a team that are pretty decent. But, you know, Nick Bonino, is he worth keeping, right? He's, he's probably not going to stick around. The team's playing well with him on the second line, but is it worth it to maybe give up next year's third, fifth, and Benito to get the Rangers first? The Rangers, where are they in the standings? You know, are they, the Rangers are, you know, they could fall out of the playoffs. They probably won't, especially getting Nick Benito. But the Devils aren't, you know, crazy far behind them, so they could end up missing the playoffs. Uh, and, and you guys, you know what? I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to stop rambling because I've got some, I, like, I want to do stuff, but I don't want to do stuff because I want to hear what you guys have to say. That Rask deal for the Blues pick was very interesting. The Blues are a team that are very good, um, and it's dangerous to uh, get theirs because, you know, I mean, even, well, we do have our own first, right? We don't have to give up our first, but like a Canucks team or the Ducks. You know, the Ducks are a team that could easily drop out of the playoffs. Do the Ducks want to give up their first? Do I go waiting call at the deadline and wait until things are a little bit more clear? The Anaheim Ducks here, draft picks, first round pick. They want Tucker Tynan in two seconds. Tucker Tynan in two seconds is doable. Tarasov a second and a third. How good is Tarasov? I think Tarasov is decent. He's somebody I'm looking for for the future. 63 at 19. I could even do this. Give up my second this year. Move up. Maybe I... You know, try and give them some more thirds or some prospects, right? That aren't going to be anything. But, you know, the Ducks are a team that are a conservative buyer. They could easily fall out of the playoffs. And Tarasov is not a guy that's going to help them get better. And even if I do this deal, I could still go and do the Blues deal and get their first for Victor Rask. So I could have three firsts. We could have so much talent. And I think this is something I should have done earlier in the series. But, guys, you guys let me know down in the comment section. Go ahead and type away. I will read all your comments. I promise I always do. Leave a like if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you want to see some more, and I will see you guys in the next one.